it's Christelle from Permacrafters. Today we'll be looking at plantain, which is a wild edible and medicinal plant that's likely growing in your backyard. So let's have a look at this plant's characteristics and how to make a delicious, nutrient-rich plantain hummus. So Plantago lanceolata, or narrowleaf plantain, is native to Eurasia, but you'll also find it in North Africa, North America, and Australia since it's been introduced there. So it's a perennial that just loves growing in gardens and in prairies. So before getting into plant ID tips, uh, here's a reminder to always be 100% certain of your plant identification. Lookalikes will vary depending on where you live in the world, so familiarize yourself with local lookalikes and also be mindful of potentially contaminated sites. So the narrow leaf plantain has a leaf that's lanceolate, meaning that it's long, wider in the middle, and shaped like a lance tip. So it has five to seven protruding veins that are practically parallel, and the leaves don't have a stem. They are basal leaves starting at the top of the plant's root system. And the leaf has a short petiole, and there are small little hairs on the leaves too. So from the base of the plantain grows a peduncle, which is a stem that supports the inflorescence, which is a cluster of flowers. So in this case, the flowers are four millimeters and will produce seeds. So the inflorescence is dense, it's narrow, and it's elongated because the flowers are tightly attached to the stem. So what are the possible confusions in my area here? So there's broadleaf plantain or hoary plantain, which are different types of plantain, but both are edible. There's more details on these in the full online course platform. So if it's your first time foraging narrowleaf plantain, it's smart to wait until the inflorescence appears. Otherwise, you might confuse it with the great yellow gentian, the white veratrum, or the white campion. So plantain is often used as an emergency poultice for stings and for cuts because of its hemostatic properties, its anti-inflammatory properties, and antiseptic properties. But did you know that you could also consume plantain? The young leaves of narrow leaf plantain are those that are growing in the center of the base. Those are really the tastiest ones and they're perfect in the spring. So the older they get, the tougher they get, the more bitter they get, but they're still perfectly edible. You can eat them uh, cooked, like in a soup or something, for example. The inflorescences are also edible at any stage, but I personally prefer the leaves. So plantain is so often considered a weed, but really it's closer to a superfood that grows abundantly almost everywhere. The leaves contain protein, mucilage, fatty acids, they contain starch, vitamins B2 and B3, vitamins C, E, and K, beta-carotene, minerals. So narrow leaf plantain leaves are safe to consume, although if you eat too many of the plantain seeds, it might have a laxative effect. So if you're looking to incorporate greens into your diet for a nutrition boost, look no further than your backyard. In our Herbal Remedies course, we go into much more detail about the medicinal properties and the medicinal uses of plantain. So if you want to check it out, we actually have a free video trial for that course. All right, now that we are familiar with narrow leaf plantain's characteristics and its nutrients, let's make a delicious wild plantain hummus. 